This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout. I'm your host, Larry Lawson, coming to you from the mothership of paranormal programming, the X-Zone Broadcast Network. Join me on our quest to bring guests and commentary to the show that will challenge your views on the paranormal and worlds beyond our own. Tonight, folks, we want to welcome our guest. Many of you may know him, Mr. Rob Demarest. Rob is known around the world as the lead investigator on TV's Ghost Hunters International and Haunting Australia. Rob hails from Albany, New York, and is considered America's hardest-working paranormal investigator. The evasive nature of paranormal investigation has fueled Rob's interest to become involved in the field at an early age. He found it fascinating, stating it's like reading a mystery that has the last page cut out. Best known as the lead investigator on the television documentary series Ghost Hunters International, but also the driving force behind recent hit Haunting Australia, Rob is a much sought-after guest on television and radio shows around the world for his straightforward approach extensive knowledge and experience investigating the paranormal. Rob has appeared on many successful television shows such as Seekers in Malaysia, Destination Truth, Ghost Hunters, Sunrise in Australia, and The Project also in Australia. Rob has investigated the paranormal on six of the world's continents, conducting hundreds of investigations. He has created new equipment to aid in paranormal investigation and has been the voice of reason, calling out those who fake evidence. This has led Rob to having a strong standing in the paranormal community and a large legion of fans across the world. Rob hopes to push the boundaries of the current knowledge in the field, approaching the mysteries of the paranormal with his own brand of open-minded skepticism and his no-fear approach. Rob, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome, my friend. Thank you very much. Larry, I was 100% with you until you got to the part about legions of fans. If you said three or four fans, I could have I could have believed you. The <laughs> legions? Rob, I don't have any legions of fans. Just reading what you wrote, old buddy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Did uh, you know who wrote that? Actually, that was written by my, one of my buddies from Haunting Australia, Alan Tiller. And I okay. said, you know, could we put millions and millions of fans? And he thought that was a little much, and and we settled on legions of fans. Because a legion could be like five or six. Yeah, it's a small legion. I get it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> anyway, so a mini legion. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be on. You know, I mean, anything, especially you know, fellow Floridian. You know, we we, we got to help each other out because I was just reading on Facebook today. Someone saying that you know, Florida is the the ultimate, the the pinnacle of paranormal drama, the world over. And I thought, you know what? If you got to be, you know, involved in something, you might as well be number one. So I don't know if we're going to get a medal or a trophy or what, but we are number one, baby. Number one with a bullet, the biggest pair of drama state in the nation. I don't know if I like the sounds of that, uh, Rob. <laughs> I prefer looking at us as one of the leaders in, uh, in the uh, field of paranormal uh, work and uh, discovery. That's the way I prefer to look at it. Listen, you know, you... Yeah, we, we were actually 46 in that, Larry. I guess check the standings. We were number 46 out of 50 in that area. But but, but drama, we're number one. Okay, we'll keep working on it. All right. Well, so tell me, you know, you've been... Everybody knows you. A lot of people know you, your, your time on TV. But, mm. you know, what got you started in this? How did you begin right. your work at the paranormal field? Yeah, I started um, when I was around... Seven, eight, nine years old, my mom would take my sister and I um, around to abandoned houses in our area. This was upstate New York. 
and and a lot of people said they were haunted but we'd go during the day and it was just something to do you go you know this was before there was no trespassing signs everywhere you know this is out in the, in the sticks and you could just go wander around these houses and i thought man wouldn't it be crazy if you turned a corner and there was like this this ghost standing right in front of you so i always thought that was really interesting i kept you know as i learned to read i learned to read reading books about ghosts and bigfoot and loch ness monster all that stuff and so when I turned, I think it was 16, I did my first in, first investigation in Connecticut, and now I've been going over 25 years. Um, right. A lot of people say like, "Wow, you know, you 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 know, you 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 really know quite a bit." No, I, I mean I think that someone could start last year and probably know as much as I do. Um, you know, I think we put too much emphasis. A lot of of us do. Myself included at time, you know, we, we always like to say, like, I've been doing this over 20 years, but it doesn't really make me any better than somebody who's been doing it a year. You know, I mean, you could, if, if Larry, you came to me and said, Rob, teach me how to ghost hunt. I've got one week. I guarantee I could have you up to the same speed as me pretty much in a week. You know, we, we wouldn't have read all the same books, but you'd, you'd be able to do an EVP session and EMF sweep and all the basic well, stuff, right? We're going to talk a little later in the show about about training and some things and get, get your opinion and your sure. views and all of that. Uh, right now, we're going to get ready to go to our first break. Uh, so I want to have everybody stay with us. Rob Demarest, Ghost Hunters International. Stay tuned, and we'll see you back here in just a minute or two. Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Foundation focusing on evidence based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good To Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? 
wire crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Paranormal Stakeout. Larry Lawson here with our guest tonight, Rob Demers from Ghost Hunters International. Rob, we got talking about training a couple seconds ago and how, you know, you can quickly you can get some people up, up online. When you got started in this business, obviously there wasn't any formal training or anything like that. What did you do to get yourself proficient in the field? Did, did, did you have a mentor, for example? Um, yeah, I didn't, and that would be my mom. Uh, my mom was, was very knowledgeable, um, probably knows a lot more than I do even to this day about pretty much any paranormal topic from, from psychics to, to Bigfoot to you name it. Um, she's a wealth of knowledge. And so she, she taught me about a lot of this stuff. You know, this is obviously you're going back. This is before, you know, once in a while. I mean, keep in mind, we had In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy, right? And he'd do a ghost story once in a while. We had sightings. Um, so there was a, sh- a TV show here and there, but it wasn't like the kids today. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because back then we had to kind of blaze our own path. You know, if it, that house is haunted. Go figure it out. Right. So you had a flashlight and you went wandering around and you start saying, I wonder what else we could use. Now everyone watches TV and goes, OK, well, I'll go buy everything I see them use. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's not a good thing because you know, how many people actually know how to use the equipment or understand the theories behind it? Well, not to mention that most of it's absolute junk. Um, I'm gonna, I uh, like you, like you said, and I, I know you wrote that entire thing about how wonderful I am at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I, I keep it honest. Uh-huh. Yeah, I did. Well, thirty bucks and, and a new <laughs> hat. Um, but but at the end of the day, most of the stuff that you see on TV is worthless. Uh, and that's the truth. And and anybody who's really deep in this field will tell you the same thing. Um, there's a couple things that we have that are that are our old standbys, right? We have our video cameras that we can see in in the dark, and we got our voice recorders. They're pretty good. And everything kind of beyond that, we can argue about. Um, some of this stuff now, it's what I call microwave ghost hunting. It it'll give you results every time, no matter where you are doesn't matter if you're in your living room or Waverly Hills. It, 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 will, it will give you results every single time. So how are you going to use that to provide quote-unquote evidence? So a lot of these people that they're just getting started now, they're watching these shows and saying, oh, these are the items I need. But you right. wish that they wouldn't watch the shows and they'd come up with their own ideas. They, you know, think about it. Well, what I did, I did this Give me an example. Oh, I'll give you an example. Um, the, uh, the, the SB11, the, the, these spinning radios. And let's get back to the beginning, because people took credit away from Frank Sumption. 
Guy's name was Frank Assumption. He passed away, I believe, two years ago. Um, he was from the West Coast. He he came up with this idea that if you spun the radio dial, you could you, it could put voices together. Now he actually believed these were aliens communicating with us, and he thought the idea of using them to talk to spirits was foolish. Now we can debate all night, and believe me, I spent hours doing it. But what, the problem is this: let's say, for the sake of argument, that you are speaking to a ghost through this radio. Everyone has to acknowledge that you're still giving yourself hundreds and hundreds of false positives, right? Because every time you pick up a radio signal, you say, is that a ghost? No, it said Yankees win. So that couldn't be a ghost. Well, let, let's, you know, let's, back um, another, just, let's back up for just a second. Sure. Some folks may not understand what the SB 11 is or what that concept is. Can, can you explain right. that just for those? Yes, that may yes I can. Okay, imagine, um, now this, this goes back a couple of years, sorry for any kids out there listening, but when, when, you, when your mom had the, your car radio and your station wagon, when, when you know, Larry and I were a little younger, you'd spin the dial to the different channels. Nobody listens to radios anymore, but you'd spin the dial. Well, basically what these devices do is that the dial spins continuously. It, it never stops spinning. It just goes through the channels over and over and over again. And the idea is, the concept is that the spirit will use the white noise of the radio signal to come through and vocalize your responses, which is fine in theory, except you're also picking up bits of radio chatter all the time. So you say, how many ghosts are in this building? Now you wait a while and you hear bits, of, what, the, 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 all these noises, and then you hear the, the word one. Oh, well, now you have an answer. There's one ghost in the building. Except if you think about it, when you spin through the radio dial, how many times are they going to say, this is 107.9, the edge? Okay. So it, it makes sense that you're going to, or if you say yes or no, can you, can you, you know, are you angry we are here? Well, if you listen for, you know, 30 seconds, you're going to hear a yes or a no in, in a radio broadcast. Mm -hmm. um, so, even though some people swear by it and love it, and the reason they like it so much is because it'll work anywhere. Um, when, when, when I was younger, you knew that a ghost hunt meant sitting in the dark. Ooh. Sitting in the dark and, and hoping that you were going to get something. Most of the time you didn't. But now you got all these people who, you know, if, if something doesn't happen in the first five minutes, they're ready to say, well, this place isn't haunted and go home. It's, and that's it's, just it's, not the right way to do it. Well, it's, it seems like society today, what's the instant gratification? And so what I'm hearing from you is equipment is set up to provide that instant gratification, that instant success, if you will. Absolutely. Which would be fantastic if this stuff actually worked. But I don't believe it does. Okay, well, let me ask you this then. I agree with you. A lot of the old school stuff works the best. But if you had one piece of equipment that, that you would take into an investigation, what would you, Rob Demarest, take? Um, I would, you know what I would take these days? You know, you know what everyone says and they think they're being clever? They go, my sense is, yeah, but, you know, as you know, Larry, eyewitness testimony is some of the worst testimony you can ever have, right? It's yeah, so absolutely. unreliable. So what you would real, what I would really want is a cell phone, because the cell phone has a camera, it has a video camera, it has a voice recorder. You know, I can call for help if I trip and fall down or something. So if I'm going in a haunted house, it's got a flashlight built in. So so everyone who says, what should I spend all my money on if I want to get started on ghost hunting? Nothing. Take your take your 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 cell phone with you. And you've got all those things ready to go. Well, yeah, and I like little things, too. I'm like a, a simple compass can be really helpful. I mean, with electromagnetic... A, a compass, if you are looking for changes in the electromagnetic field, a compass will work. I mean, I, I remember, um, I forgot the gentleman's name, but I used to see, he, he did documentaries on ghosts 20 plus years ago. Peter James. Um, and he used to walk around with a compass, a simple compass. And he'd yep. look for it to deviate. 
And if it deviated, that's, you know, the electromagnetic field is a disturbance. Now, the problem is, we, even when you talk about EMF, we say, well, if, if the EMF changes, then it goes to zero. Well, what evidence do we have to support that? It, it's you know, all, we, 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 yeah, I agree. It's all It's theory. all theoretical. You know, if there's too much EMF, then it's, it's making you think there's a ghost there. If there's a little EMF, then it's a microwave. If there's a medium EMF, it's a ghost talking to you. Well, we got we to gotta figure out one or the other here, you know, because we've been working with EMF for decades, and we're not getting much closer. Okay. I mean, people are using better devices to measure EMF, but I'm not sure it's helping us move in the, in forward. Okay. Then, then let me ask you this. I know that you have, and I certainly have had, experiences that we know cannot be explained. Mm -hmm. Take into consideration your, your statement, which I, I, I agree with on, on many levels. What do we need to do? I, I noticed in your bio it talks about uh, you know pushing, pushing the envelope forward in the field. What do we need to do? Where do we need to go to get the equipment that can prove these personal experiences? If you've heard my show in the past, one of the things I really stress on is getting evidence, collecting evidence, preserving the evidence, and being able to present it to a court. What do you think we need mm -hmm. to do to get there? I'm going to tell you where the, the key is, is, is which step. You said preserving the evidence, right? Now, now you know, I, I've, I've taken my, my, you know, law courses here and there, so I know about the, the chain of evidence and how it has to be passed, and, you know, I have it for my security licenses as well. So what do you need? You need a uh, piece of equipment that data logs, that it tells you that at 9.05 and 43 seconds, there was an EMF spike. Now we take that information and we say, well, that's in, in, in you know, the staying with our law metaphor here, that's, that's interesting. It's circumstantial. The, the EMF spike could have been a ping from a cell phone tower. Did anything else happen right at that moment? Well, now we check all our other data logs. Wait a second. The ion count went up at that exact within five seconds of that. And the two shouldn't be related. Now we have a correlation. Now we're Thank building you. a case. Thank you. Okay. There's actually a neat piece of equipment out there, not to plug anybody on purpose, but uh, the EDI uh, geophone. Have you seen it with the... Uh, yes. The, I yep. actually... I love that piece of equipment because it does all that it barometric pressure, uh, vibration, EMF, the whole bit, and yes. it records it and logs it. I love that piece of equipment. Now, now, there was one a couple years ago. The gentleman who made it stopped mating, making it for an unknown reason, and he vanished. And it was called the, the Dark Matter X, or DMX for short, not to be confused with the wrapper. But what this thing did is it measured all different kinds of EMF. It measured barometric pressure it measured temperature it also kept a voice recording going and it would do all this while data logging to a sd card and it could be it would run 11 hours on one charge and measure like nine of these things at the same time yeah that, we need to get back to and, and i can tell you what the problem is things like that are not inexpensive true and so people say, yeah, but I want, I saw on one of these shows where, where it shows the outline of the ghost and the ghost is like moving its arms, you know, and it, it's an Xbox thing. Uh, that's silly. You're, you're taking a piece of equipment that is designed to look for straight lines that resemble the human form and it'll make it out of almost anything. And it'll move because it, it's not really a human body that it's looking at. So it's trying to create the human body. Um, you know, that's my personal opinion. So, so we need to stick to something that I can, I can show to you and say, look, at, here's, here's a graph. Now you can go in the same building that I did, use the same equipment, and come back to, to me and say, hey, Rob, you know what? I got at 934, I got that same EMS hit. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that that's the same time that they, they charge the power grid next door. There's a power plant right well there. Well said. And I go, well oh, darn it. Well, there we go. 
put now that next in. time we know to disregard that. Absolutely. And and that's important stuff because that's how we collect evidence and we get it right and we collect it. Now, we got to take a break here in just a second. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about evidence collection. Folks, stay with us. Rob Demarest will be back on the other side. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influenced her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Mnemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Mnemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Hey folks, welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout with our guest tonight, Rob Demarest. We're having a 
really spirited conversation here, and uh, we've been talking a little bit about evidence. Um, Rob, you bring up some excellent points, and I agree with you. Being a cop, I'm very uh, very picky about evidence and consistency, uh, protecting the evidence and evaluating it, and you, you brought up some really good points. Um, I want to ask you a couple other quick questions about it, get your thoughts on it. Central repository for evidence. You know, you, you know, you, I, I go into a building, I'm using the EDI, and uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're able to chart a bunch of evidence, and then you take your EDI and you chart a bunch of evidence, and we both get something. Taking this evidence and putting it in a spot where other investigators might be able to draw from it uh, and, and compare it to theirs. What are your thoughts? I mean, I think obviously it's a good idea. Um, a lot of people talk about, well, we're a scientific team. Well, if you're a scientific team, you have to put your evidence in front of peer review. Mm -hmm. um, people have to look at it and say, well, wait a second, are you sure that your device's batteries weren't dying because it seems like all your readings were going down at the same time? And you go, ooh, you're right. I didn't catch that. Thank you. And that's how we improve. So if you did have a centralized website, um, it would be a step in the right direction. Because what if, what if we said, you know, we, we had a location, um, let's say a hospital. And I go in there and I say, oh, there's definitely ghosts here because I have really high EMF. So I put it on the website. Well, you go in the next weekend, use the same device. You get the exact same EMF readings. Well, you, you, and so do the same six people after us. Mm -hmm. And now we say, wait a second, wait a second. Now we're not talking about ghosts. Well, we need to rewind things back a little bit and start looking for why there might be, you know, a, an alternative explanation for these readings. Mm -hmm. But if I was there by myself and I didn't have your readings to look at, I'd say, oh, there was ghosts everywhere. We did, our readings were off the charts. Well said. But because I, you know, and when you have a, if you had a website or you had a, even a group of people who share this kind of information, you're establishing a baseline. You know, um, any, any, in any science, chemistry, biology, zoology, you name it, physics, you run a test and then you run it a hundred more times. And then when you're done with that, you run it a thousand times after that. We don't do that in paranormal, do we? We, we, we go, Ooh, I heard there's a farm that's haunted down the road and we investigate there twice. And then we go somewhere else because let's face it, we, we are kind of, you know, we, we do want a little adventure in our lives. You know, we, we are looking for some fun, you know, fun too. Sure. If it was the most miserable job in the world, we wouldn't do it. Because as we know, we're not getting paid to do it. You know, we're doing this on our free time. Um, so so the part of the problem we're facing is, and, and, that, and what you suggested would be a, a potential solution. Mm -hmm. And um, you could go on the website you know, one of the other things is, is that there's locations that, that, and there's a huge debate. I don't want to get too far off topic, but there's a huge debate. If, if I have permission to investigate a building, should I let every other paranormal team come in? And, uh, yeah. and that, well, you could say, well, yes, yes, you should. Then you get more and more evidence. Well... It's set that then also, if I know a team is well known for making a mess, uh, you know, drinking yeah, alcohol ability. while they're investigating. Yeah. Yes. Now the people who used to let me in don't want to let me in anymore. Well, and so and there's gonna, a big question there. Well, I'm going to tell you something, and, and I've talked about it several times in the show in the past. I'm very, very fortunate, blessed, if you will, to be in a, uh, a city that is open and is basically allowing me to turn the city of Felsmere into a laboratory of sorts. So, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's one reason why I'm, I'm able to get other folks in. Of course, I've got to monitor it really carefully so we don't run into problems, but it's, I, I'm fortunate to, to be in the city of Felsmere and have them work with me so closely. And I'm hoping that other folks can be fortunate or for, will be fortunate enough to have towns or facilities that will also allow it. But it also comes with great responsibility on our end. I, I totally agree with you to make sure we are, um, we're genuine to our hosts, if you will. Right. So, well, there's, but, you know, you also, as, as a member of law enforcement, you go in with, with a certain level of, of responsibility above 
the average citizen. Um, luckily, I have one of my neighbors. He lives about a half a mile down from me. Is also um, in law enforcement and paranormal investigator. And so when we go in somewhere, you know, he doesn't go in uniform, obviously, and we say, is it possible to investigate here? And they go, oh, we're not really interested. And he introduces himself, you know, and he just tells them what he does. Not to try and exert any pressure, but to say, look, we're not 16-year-olds looking for a place to to sneak a few beers. (laughs) You know, we, we take this very seriously. If anything, we will return it in your, your location in better condition than it was. You know, we'll clean up more than we made a mess. Um, and they tend to go, yeah, okay, if, if we can, if I, you will right. get the insurance for it, then there you go. You're right. But, it's but all that's about why people, well, but if you, but people need to realize, you know, if you go into these places wearing all black and, you know, looking like you haven't slept in three days, and say, hey, I'm like a total ghost hunter, you're probably going to get a no. <laughs> you know, nobody's letting you in. And I wouldn't let you in either. If you came knocking on the door of my house like that, I wouldn't let you inside. You know, and, and so, for one, you know, I, I don't judge people's fashion choices. That's their life. But go for that one day, go put on a collared shirt, you know, press your pants a little bit, put, I, put your nicer shoes school, on. I am old school, Rob, and I totally agree with you. It's about presentation. It's about making people feel comfortable with your level of responsibility and desire exactly. to do the job right. So I, I'm, I'm with well, you. And that's how you talk to them as well. They say, well, what do you want to do? And you say, well, what we do is we use um, several various pieces of equipment in order to try and find evidence of anomalies, strange occurrences within the building and then see if there, we can find alternative explanations other than spirits. And if we're left with no other explanations, then, then we can really examine that evidence thoroughly, and we'd be happy to share it with you. And they say, wow, that sounds terrific. Another thing you can do, if they say, well, we don't want kids coming here and trashing the place because they saw your evidence on Facebook, you say, we would be happy to do a non-disclosure agreement, or NDA where we sign a legal form stating that we will not divulge the address, location, type of business. We can use the evidence, but we can't tell you where we were when we caught it. Yeah. And, and people will say, well, that seems fair. You have to remember when you're going to these places, it's all about the motivation. And if you, you come in and you're very nice and very businesslike, they may say yes, they may say no. If you say, you know, I mean, and, and let's be honest, money talks. If you say, they say, well, we've got a night security guard. You say, well, we'd be happy to pay the security guard for that night. Hmm. Okay, that seems fair. Or you say, we'd be happy to run a, a, a ghost hunt event for you come October, free of charge. And all the proceeds go to your organization. Hmm. Now they see a benefit. You know, so it's all about finding the needs you know, because people ask me a lot, well, how do you find a new location? You ask. You know, the dumbest thing I hate, I hate when, when you see these news articles that they say ghost hunters get caught breaking into, they weren't ghost hunters. They, yeah. they, they were, you know, punks, to be honest, for the lack of a better word. They're, they're you know, goofs that were going to break in somewhere. And when they got caught, they go, well, we heard this place got like ghosts in it. It's called breaking and entering, you know, and, and, and if it's a construction area, it's a felony. And people don't know some of these things, and, and you're going to really do yourself a disservice if you get caught doing this. It may seem thrilling, but, you know, stay home and watch, watch one of the shows on TV. Don't go into these buildings because you make it that much harder for the rest of us. Yeah, and you know what? I appreciate you bringing this up, and, and I know a lot of my listeners out there are, are experienced – in the field, but there's a lot of folks out there that may be just interested in, in wanting to to start getting into this uh, area of research and investigation. So your words are well taken, and and I'm glad they're hearing it from somebody of your of your level because it is important that you show responsibility, you show restraint, you show a, a responsibility when you go into these places. So I do appreciate your words. No, well, thank you. I mean, it's a level of professionalism. That, that we all adhere to. I mean, I look back, people used to give me a lot of crud when I was on TV. 
because they'd say, well, you know, look at this guy wearing his hat backwards. And, and, you know, I look back and sometimes it's a little embarrassing. And I say, "Eh, maybe that wasn't the best choice. But, you know, I mean, you live and learn. And to tell you the truth, I I couldn't be damned. I couldn't spend the time to do my hair to be on TV. So I'm going to throw a baseball cap on, you know. (laughs) But if I had been going in that place off camera, you know, I very, very much wouldn't be wearing a T-shirt and jeans and going, hey, can we come in? You know, just just go out there and be respectful. You know, people say we want to be taken seriously in the paranormal. And, and they say, you know, it's tearing us apart, that, that this paradrama. That's why nobody takes us seriously. No, it's not. Do you think that a, 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 a renowned Nobel Prize winning scientist says, I believe these ghost people, but they're always arguing with each other. They don't care about that. They care about that we're, we're, you know, we don't know what we're doing. We're not following scientific protocol. You know, we, we have buildings get set on fire. You know, it, it's just, that's what's really bringing us down. Well, and, and, and it's going to take structure and it's going to take um, standards that folks can agree to, adhere to, and, and want to, and want to um, embrace to change this. And I, I and, Rob, maybe no. I'm being a bit of an optimist, but I think we're heading in that direction. I think there's a group of us out there that have talked and, and realized what it's going to take to go to that next level. I, I, I think we're going to get there. And like I said, maybe I'm being a bit of an optimist. I want to change up gears on you just for a little bit because in the last sure. oh, minute or two in this section, tell me, you've been all over the world. You've investigated what, six continents on your bio. Yep. In about yep. a minute, minute 20 seconds, tell me, the most active spot you've ever been in? Most That's easy. Um, I won't even need that whole minute, 20 seconds, but that is Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. Um, it was a American Air Force Base during the Vietnam War. It was used um, as a place for, for a solid hospital that wasn't going to be shelled or attacked outside of Vietnam. Um, and everything that they said as far as activity that was going to happen, footsteps, apparitions, uh, babies crying, everything they said they reported there happened the one night we were there. Um, and so, so that place night. is in one night, one, one single night. I mean, granted, we, we probably arrived there around noon and we left there about 7 a.m. You know, so, so we put in... 19 hours but it all but we got it all we got wow. evps we got disembodied voices we got boots stomping um we got everything and it, it, it's still sad i mean it's mm-hmm. sad to this day because a lot of you know great americans lost their lives in that mm-hmm. hospital they so did. you don't so it's not necessarily a good thing that it's so active it's it's a bit depressing but it's still real active yeah well Listen, my friend, we're about ready to go to our final break here. Uh, So, folks, stay with us. I got some really good questions for Rob after the break. So stay with us. Rob Demarest on Paranormal Stakeout. See you on the other side. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. And welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout, our last segment tonight. Man, this hour has gone quick. Our guest tonight's Rob Demarest. You can get a hold of Rob at uh, rdemarest38 at gmail.com. Um, I uh, encourage you to, to go back and watch uh, tapings of his old shows, Coast Hunters International. I'd also like to invite all of you to check out all of your favorite X Zone programs by checking the schedule at www xzbn.net where you'll see all the terrific X-Zone Broadcast Network programs. And please don't forget to visit me at www.paranormalstakeout.com or my team's website at www.paranormalfbi.com and you can also reach me at ghostguy59 at gmail.com Hours gone fast, Rob. It always does. It always does. Once you get me going, you can't shut me up. Well, I, I, there's so many other things I'd like to talk to you about. We got we got a lot of common uh, a lot of common goals in this field, but I want to talk to you a little bit about television. I mm. you spent a lot of time on that TV. Uh, I hear what you're saying about equipment and whatnot. Now I want to hear about your your life as a television paranormal investigator. 
Yeah, you know, I always t- I always tell people there's three different types of investigations. There's the investigation with you and your team. There's the investigation where you bring the public in, and there's a t- there's an investigation when you're making a TV show. Um, and each one is totally different. And and the biggest, the most challenging one is the one when you're doing a TV show, because now you're adding a lot of people, sound guys, producers, cameramen all these people. And, and, you know, when you're listening for the littlest thing and a producer drops his pen or drops his clipboard or your sound guy, you know, I mean, we had, we had one time we were over in Denmark and we had this incredible, like, you know, if we said knock six times, it would just knock six times in a row. I mean, like over and over again, we're going, this is crazy. I look over and I see my camera guy changing the tape in his camera. I said, son uh-huh. of a... And, and we missed it. Uh-huh. Um, and then, you know, one of the great things that, you know, I'm sure he's not listening to the show, but my camera guy especially, um, he and I had a deal that if there was a noise and it was him, he'd hold his hand up. So I didn't have to break the, the, the what was going on to say, oh, that was my camera guy, everybody. So I'd just say... Oh, I, I guess it was nothing or the floor creaking or whatever. So I could keep investigating, but I was lucky enough when I did TV that I had the best camera guy and the best sound person um, mm-hmm. who actually got married, which is, which is pretty ironic. Um, so he and she are now off back in Los Angeles doing their thing, but they were, you know, like two church mice. They were, they were just silent and it made investigating so much easier you know, not having to worry about them making noise or bumping into things. Um, you know, so, so it, I tried to make the TV investigation as much, as close as I could to an investigation as if there was, we were just doing it with our team. There okay. was no camera crew there. Um, and and it's, it is really difficult, especially to keep in mind they're using a lot of electronics. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for EMF, and they're using walkie talkies, you're going to get some false positives. Um, So you got to be really careful. That's that's why we avoided some of the more common EMF meters because, you know, your microphone pack, you are sending a wireless signal from your microphone to the camera. Well, actually to the audio pack and then to the camera. So, so all these things, you're, you're changing the EMF levels just from the equipment. So you have to really be keep an eye on that because well, I, I never want to be the guy to say to say them. No, no, I'm just, I would just, you know, it's got to be difficult to work in that environment to do the work that you you want to do, you're used to doing, and doing it in an environment where people are are doing all that around you. There's no question that's got to be tough. But Rob, there's a lot of talk out there that much of what we see on TV is either exaggerated or faked. Yes, it is. It is absolutely. It, it, Okay, was it faked yeah. on your show? There's no, there's no secret about that. I, I didn't, I didn't fake anything. As I've always said, I put it on my life. I put it on my kids. Nothing that you ever saw of me on television during an investigation, evidence-wise, was faked, staged, to the best of my knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can, but I have a unique vantage point having been on television, so I can watch other shows and see things that the average viewer might miss. And, and notice things that the average viewer wouldn't be aware of. Um, a lot of people don't know what a wild line is. Um, and there's different terms for it in, in the TV world. But basically, it's something that you say into a microphone maybe weeks later while they're editing the show to make it make sense. So in one scene, Larry, you and I are in the basement. And the next time they join up with us, we're in the attic. Well, so they might have you do a wild line a month later talking to a mic and go, Rob, I think we should head up to the attic. And then when you watch it on the show, they show your back walking away and they have your voice say, Rob, I think we should head to the attic. Mm-hmm. So, so I know these little, I know where the little tricks are and, and the little things. And I also know that, you know, you watch a lot of these shows now and they have 100% success records. Every place they have been has had tremendous activity. And that's just not real to me. 
I've, I've done too many investigations where nothing yeah. happened. Absolutely. I, I always say it's a, a paranormal investigations, ghost hunting is like fishing. Sometimes they're biting, sometimes yes. they're not. You, 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 you Absolutely. just can't have them act on cue. But so you're saying that the shows, the percentage of shows out there, how many of them mm. have either exaggerated or flat out faked evidence, in your opinion? Almost all, in my opinion, almost all of them. Okay. How about your show? I mean, Ghost Hunters International, we never faked anything. Um, now, there's a difference. Let's, let's talk about, say, Haunting Australia when I did that show. Okay. When we were driving to the location, you know, they'd have someone tell us about it, right? Mm -hmm. This school is 150 years old, and we're all nodding our heads. We already knew all that stuff. They handed us a, a packet of paper that told us the history of the place before we even got there. Right. Uh -huh. But I always said once I, 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 all that stuff is just to make a TV show. That's fine. But I said, you got to do that. So yeah, I, I, but I said from the time we turn the lights off to the time we turn them back on, leave me the hell alone. Let me do what you brought me here to do and stay the hell out of my way. And, and if I catch you, if, if I think you're trying to pull one over, because keep in mind, some of these TV crews, you know, I, I, I know a particular show that I've, I've saw a while back. I noticed that there was fakery going on, but I don't think that the team on the show knows. I think it was a production company, the, the TV people that were doing it, that were making noises, that were throwing rocks, you know, adding oh. sound effects and doing all that stuff. But wouldn't the team know it after they saw the episode or saw excerpts? Wouldn't they be able to figure it out? I mean, most of us would. Yes. Yes, they would. And and then, then the question becomes, you know, shouldn't they at that point have said, wait a second, this isn't what we signed up for. We're out of here. Or does the money and the fame and the notoriety become worth more to them and they stick around? Well, the show is still on, so... Clearly, it, it meant more to them to stay on TV. Now, have you found on any of your shows, and I'll take you, you know, I don't, I know you, and I'll take you to your word that you, you didn't do anything yourself, but did you ever catch watching repeats of your shows or, or looking over them again, somebody uh, doing some tomfoolery, some trickery? Oh, sure. I, you know, there was, there was a show I did, and, and it was, but it, I know why it happened. There was a, we got a great EVP on one of the shows I did. Mm -hmm. And then you, you'd get these emails months later and they'd say, uh, that EVP you got, we don't have that file. And so we go, okay, we'll email it to you. And then another month would go by and they say, we didn't get the email. We'll email. So you get all this confusion, right? And then we, mm -hmm. I watch the episode and they play the EVP quote unquote EVP and it sure as hell wasn't what we caught someone, they couldn't find the original tape mm -hmm. of the EVP we captured. So they added something in. Um, I was watching another show um, that I did and you'll see me saying, I hear footsteps. Mm -hmm. Now, as you watch the show, you're going to hear boom, boom, boom. That did not, you did not hear. I listened myself to the audio and I was using a high-end voice recorder. So I guarantee there was no sound. of When I listened to the tape, you couldn't hear footsteps. So they added that in post to give it more atmosphere. What did you do about um, that? Well, that was a, I, the show only lasted one season, so there wasn't much oh, to do about okay. it one way or another. Gotcha. You know, so they, they didn't really care what I thought. But I knew something was up because I was supposed to be present during post-production where you cut and edit the show together. And suddenly they said, well, we're pretty much done. And I said, what do you mean you're done? We've already edited it. And I thought, well, that's really strange. And then I, I knew why. Yeah. Um, because they, they, look, it's not a TV producer's job to be honest, to, to you know, maintain credibility. Mm -hmm. They just want to make a good show. Yeah. It's your job to be honest and to remain credible as best you can. Well, and and that's 
unfortunately, we, we're coming to the end of our show, and that's a great way to end it. And I, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your honesty. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Rob Demarest, uh, former lead investigator, Ghost Hunters International. I want to thank you for being on the show tonight. I want to thank all of you folks for listening. Um, we're going to look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Paranormal Stakeout, folks. Signing off, and I'll see you on the other side. Good night.